Today I'm going to basically practice a presentation I'm beginning in a couple days at the Altrix Atlanta Users Group on January 14th of 2021. And the topic today isn't necessarily very sophisticated, but it could be very useful if you're doing geospatial analysis. And in this example, I'm going to talk about how I do data prep in Altrix to prepare custom data sources, and then I send them over to Tableau for visualization. And this is a uh, specialty case where I'm trying to display data at the designated marketing area level of detail. Those are called DMAs. Um, if you don't know about DMAs, you'll learn a little bit about them. They're, they were created by Nielsen to uh, talk about the regions that could receive particular programming on televisions and or radio, I think. Um, they've been around for a while. I've encountered them before in the past of my uh, business analytics career. And uh, I've done experimentation across DMAs. And so this would be a good topic uh, for people who are not familiar with DMAs. So who am I? Well, my name's Ken Black. I write a blog called datablends.us. It was formerly called 3D Animates Blog. I've, uh, for the past decade or so, been working on techniques of uh, data and data analytics techniques in Tableau and Alteryx in figuring out ways to combine the, the power of both tools to get a lot of work done. So what is my background? I've been a computational scientist for about 40 years, almost four decades now, which is really hard, hard to comprehend. It seems like I graduated college a few minutes ago, but I did uh, 25 years as an environmental scientist, followed by about eight or nine years as a uh, process improvement consultant, followed by the last uh, six, seven years doing pure business analytics in the automotive industry. When I use Altrix, I feel like I never want to stop working. It gives me uh, great satisfaction to use Altrix. I tend to extend um, its usage into many different fields, science, medicine, uh, business, many different things, many different industries. And uh, my, my overall goals for using Altrix are to teach as many people as possible how to further their careers through the use of Altrix. So my family uh, has given me great support through the years. My beautiful wife, there's me on the left, my wife, Tony, uh, our older son, Colton, who's now also a business analyst for working in the automotive industry. There's Jet, my little guy, who's now nine and my daughter, Sarah, who's an occupational therapist. So in this particular case study, what we're gonna be talking about is in a situation I encountered a few months ago where I compute lease payments, uh, millions of them, 20 to 30 million per month. And then I need to understand what they are. I need to create graphics in forms of tables, charts, or maps. And since the leases are computed on the designated marketing area or DMA level, there's a natural uh, desire to view these to view these payments at that level of detail. And so that's a map uh, type view, and that could be done in Tableau, could be done in other tools, maybe like a what, Mapbox, but in my case, I'm using Tableau. And so I really had to do two, two things to make that happen. Number one is I had to write a workflow to compute the leases, and then I had to combine the computed leases with the DMA polygons, which, uh, which you're going to learn about today. So this graphic is, in, is intentionally unreadable. This is a workflow I wrote to compute the leases. There's hundreds of millions of, there's really technically billions of records coming in to this workflow, and I compute about 30 million lease payments per month. And then... Um, that all happens within about 10 minutes. Now, this workflow is, an, on, on, I'm not going to talk about it, but basically it took me two months to initially get the leases computed, probably two or two weeks to do that, two months to get it fully functional and tested. Um, and that was after teams of people tried for um, three years to be able to do it, and they, they found it difficult with traditional programming methods. And that's the brilliance of Alteryx. So what, it, what are the 211 DMAs? What do they look like? Well, here's a map showing 
the the basically DMAs come with the three digit code 500 series 600 700 800 and that basically goes from east to west and the 500 series are shown over here on the east coast 600s in central and then the mountain region 770s and the west coast 800s you can see there are some 700s in the midwest don't know why that's the case maybe they developed later on um, i don't know the whole history of dmas but basically what I want to do is compute leases at the DMA level and then display them on a map that would look like this. Of course, it wouldn't look, the colors wouldn't look like this, but you'll see some examples. So how can you get the DMA information? Well, if you were to go to the blog datablends.us and do a search for the word useful, like I've done here, you would find already a couple of articles that I wrote back in 2017 on useful zip codes and useful county shape files. Uh, for Tableau and Alteryx, and those have been used by a lot of people. And there will be a third one that'll show up that I'll write in the next day or two that'll be a useful USA DMA shapefile for Tableau and Alteryx. So specifically, what is the problem? Well, I want to combine the lease payments with the DMAs in Tableau. With 211 DMAs, that means that Tableau has to create a join between each computed lease in its associated polygon. And to do that took 25 minutes for one credit level, and I have nine credit levels. And so that's about 1.3 million records in uh, one credit level, over 30 million in all nine. And uh, so that would be almost approaching four hours to just to wait for Tableau to prepare the data for visualization. And when I first encountered that, I knew that I had to make a change to be able to speed up the uh, really, really to speed up the, the operation overall so that I could get through the analysis. So what I did was I reduced the complexity of the DMA boundaries. And that's through the use of the Alteryx generalized uh, tool, the Polygon generalized tool, which is probably one of the more underutilized tools in the spatial data set. But just because you use it doesn't mean it's going to be a good solution. So I had to check the results visually and quantitatively to make sure that what I did made sense and didn't distort the, the shapes of the DMAs to the point where things looked uh, wanky. So initially, this is what I was greeted with. I had data coming in through a, an extract, a hyper extract over here, and then I did an inner join with the national DMA shape files with the DMA code on the left side being equal to the key on the right side. And that took 25 minutes per credit level. And after waiting for a couple of those, I was like, okay, there's gotta be a better way. Well, you might think that, oh, he'll just do it in Alteryx and let Alteryx handle it. Well, that's not the right way either because what happens is Alteryx will create a copy of each polygon for each join that it creates, which means you're combining 1.3 million records with 211 polygons, and so you're getting multiple uh, duplications of these polygons. And so even after waiting just maybe 30 minutes, in this example is only 2% done and creating 39 gigabytes of output, I knew that doing the spatial join in Alteryx was the wrong idea. So you don't want to have gigabytes of output and wait hours uh, for that to happen. Obviously, that's ace tip number one. So what I did was I generalized the DMA polygons in Alteryx with a simple workflow, which is shown here. So I take the national coverage the DMA shapefile, hit it with the generalization settings I'm interested in, compute the new uh, areas of each DMA and the polygonal boundaries. And then in this case, I also added a couple of more spatial definitions of, of a region and some other types of markets that I was interested in having access to in, in terms of displaying these lease payments. So when I did that, and then I computed the difference between uh, each new area and each new boundary length so that I could see which DMAs were impacted the most by the generalization technique. Well, this workflow is creating uh, polygons at the one mile generalization level. And this only has to be done once. It takes about two minutes to run. So once that was done, I, uh, and here's the, here's the settings that are in the generalized tool. Basically, you take the spatial object, you hit a threshold of one mile and preserve consistency across the entire layer. I also tested through a sensitivity test of looking at um, five mile generalization, 10, 20, and 30. And the reason I picked these is because I was thinking 
at the national level when you're displaying in the whole United States a contiguous 48, I could probably get away with big generalizations. And so my question is then coming out of the sensitivity analysis is which level do I want to use and how different are the boundaries, how different are the areas, and is this a good technique to use for all your all your polygon type spatial matching? Well, this is what the generalized tool does. It takes a polygonal boundary like the green island shown here, and given the certain thresholds uh, that you specify in the generalized tool, it'll create a generalized polygon boundary. That general boundary shown in purple here is in exactly the same shape as the island. It tries to approximate it, and the areas are going to be different, and clearly the number of points of the polygon are going to be different. Uh, the boundary length is going to be different, but if on the projection that you're looking at, you can't really visually tell a difference, then it's going to be okay to use. The, uh, the, the, the Romer Douglas uh, Pucher algorithm is what's used to create the generalization. It's a very interesting algorithm, and if you haven't ever looked at it, go on Wikipedia and take a look at it. There's a link here in the, in the, um, in the title to take you to that. So with my starting point being the national DMA shapefile, which was 76.2 megabytes, that's what was taking 25 minutes to run per credit level. So with a, even a one mile generalization, that brought that shapefile down from 76.2 to 1.6 megabytes, a massive reduction. And beyond that, going to even more coarse generalization, it really wasn't affecting the size of the shapefile very much. And so therefore, the, the joins of all of these, the time for the join is only going to be, you're only going to save another second or two when you go to the higher or more coarse generalizations. So I determined that the one mile generalization was the appropriate one for me, which gave me faster load times in Tableau. So to understand the role of generalization, the question is, should you do this for all of your work where you're using polygons? And the answer is no. And the reason it's no has to do with, uh, de it depends on what you're doing. So in my case here, the answer was yes, because I was displaying data at a national level and I can't see small differences in polygon boundaries. So generalization works great because it achieves my objective of a shorter join time and still gives me visually uh, accurate representations of the DMAs, as you'll see here in a moment. But if you're doing spatial matching, where you're looking for polygons, you're using polygons and points, whether being in the polygon or out of the polygon, that's not going to be as accurate. And that's uh, that happens in cases like where I'm tracking a, a, an automobile through different time zones, and I have time zone polygons. I wouldn't want to generalize the time zone polygons because I'm not going to get accuracy as I cross over that boundary. So that's why uh, generalization is not applicable to every case. But when you need it, you need it. And in this case, I needed it. And so here's a picture of computed leases by the DMA, where the DMAs are full resolution, 76 megabyte coverages. And you can see that. And I go to the next one. This is the one mile generalized case. If I go back, and I go forward and back and forward, you really have to study to see any differences. And really, for, for most DMAs that have straight lines, you know, there are going to be no differences. It's only where you have really complicated boundaries, like down here in New Orleans, where you have the Mississippi River Delta. So I wanted to find out where those were. And so what I did is I plotted the percent change in area of each DMA polygon. So there's 211 points in here versus the percent change in the boundary length of the polygon. Because as you generalize, the number of points along the polygon boundary get reduced, and consequently, the length along the boundary gets reduced. And so we had anywhere from minus 1% to 2% change in area with the one-mile polygon generalization. But the percent change in length of the boundary could be quite large, up to 70%, for example, here in New Orleans. And as I look at these big, biggest ones here, we see New Orleans, which is an ocean boundary, uh, DMA, Salisbury, Maryland, same thing, ocean boundary, New Bedford, Rhode Island, uh, New Bedford, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, Providence, Rhode Island, another one down here where actually the area went the other way, where the area um, uh, became negative, the percent change became negative. So 
when you're looking at this then to understand what what's really happening here's the full resolution new orleans boundary and you can see there's tremendous uh amount of detail here in the delta and so this is 90 9.9 uh, well, 9,971 square miles, the length is 6,800 miles, and number of parts to define this is 3,000. When we go down to the generalized now, we see the area has just changed less than 2%, 9,787 square miles, but the boundary length changed a lot, 70%. And you can see that here, 70%, and then the area changes only 1.8, but the number of parts was reduced from in the thousands down to 138. And you can see here that th these polygon boundaries are much more coarse. So if we zoom into that region, this is the full resolution with all of the roads and all of the uh, delta complexity. And here it is in the generalized form. So you could see clearly why uh, this would respond much faster in Tableau. And so when I take it into Tableau and I take the extract and I do the one mile generalized polygon boundary, what I find out is that the operation now takes one minute compared to 25 minutes. And <clears throat> so the takeaways are by generalizing polygons and alteryx, the speed of the tableau joints can be dramatically improved. In my case, I went from 25 minutes to one minute per credit level. And in other words, almost four hours versus nine minutes. So that's a, a pretty dramatic improvement. And when you're doing this over and over month after month, it's a huge time savings. And then the change in the DMA areas at one mile generalization is pretty small. You can only really see it upon zooming in. When you're out at the DMA level, there's no, there's no real change uh, that you can that you can perceive visually. And then you can generalize any type of polygon that you might want to use in Tableau. You could have custom regions. You could have uh, other things like that are uh, company specific regions. This type of thing. And in in Tableau. Um, you have various already supported forms of geographical boundaries, such as CBSAs or MSAs. You have airports. Now, uh, airports weren't in there for a long time, and I had to write an article years ago about how you could bring airport uh, airports into Tableau. But they change this over time. They add more custom geometries into Tableau natively. And so if they're in there natively, you're going to get fast performance. But DMAs are not in there, and that's why I had to do this. So finally, a um, couple things that you should know that if you, if you want to learn more about techniques like this, I tend to write these type of articles on the blog, go to uh, this part of it, the email address, sign up. You can get articles sent to you automatically. There's no cost to you. There are no ads. I don't monetize this. I've never made a cent through a decade of doing this. It, this is something that I do to give back to the community. Um, and then go to the reference section of the of the blog where there's a link here to all my Alteryx articles. You click that link and you'll get the entire history of all everything I've written about Alteryx. And equivalently, you can do the same thing with your Tableau articles. And there's uh, three or 400 of these things combined. So those are my ACE tips for the, for, uh, for our Alteryx audience today. And then finally, I was at the zoo the other day and I gave my little boy, Jet, a, uh, a question when we were looking at the rhinos and the elephants. And I said, what do you get when you cross a rhino with an elephant? And he said, I don't know what. I said, well, elephino, but I know it's not Oliver, your cat. And he thought that was a big, funny thing. So that's what happens when you're nine. <laughs> your, your father can give you some uh, funny jokes. but. Thank you for listening and take a look at, at the blog for the next installment of uh, using DMAs in your Tableau work. Thanks for listening.